Asalaamu As Alaikum, everyone. Uh, welcome and Juma Mubarak. I am thrilled to introduce to you a new khatiba to join the Muslim Space um, Muslim Space Showcase. Um, so we are joined today by Aziza Yi, who is a Korean adoptee and recent Muslim convert. She was raised in West Virginia in a West Virginia family. Yi grew up in Northern Virginia, moved to Colorado in 2017, and married in 2018, more than five years ago. Aziza is of the Cheyenne Ute native lands of Denver, Colorado. Without further ado, I will switch it over to Aziza. Hello, everyone. I am going to discuss the benefits of four out of five pillars, starting with the Shahada. I will spend most of my time though on prayer and fasting. There is no God but Allah, and assuredly Allah is almighty, all wise. Quran 363. The first pillar is rather self-explanatory. Without the Shahada, there would be no Islam and no conversion to Islam. All that I have to say on it is our life takes its you from Allah, and who could give a better hue to life than Allah if we but truly worship him? Quran 2, 138. Before we get into prayer, an integral part of prayer is wudu and husl. Believers, when you stand up for prayer, wash your faces and your hands up to the elbows, and wipe your heads and wash your feet up to the ankles. And if you're in the state of ritual purity, purify yourselves by taking a bath. Quran 5, 6. So first, let us consider the context. During the time of Jalalia, the age of ignorance, the Arabs lived in a hot desert climate when people didn't bathe regularly and toilets had not yet been invented. The most obvious benefit of washing is for medical reasons. Washing before prayer gets people to remove germs that cause disease. Wudu only focuses on the parts of the body most susceptible to germs in the time of a pandemic, as well as the place on the body where one might find lice. It removes excess oil and dirt, dead skin cells, and smelly sebum. It also takes care of the skin, the largest organ on the human body. According to Time in December 2020, every day you inhale countless potentially infectious particles. If one gets past the mucus lining in your upper airway and enters the lungs, you could get sick. So the cleaning of the nostrils also prevents um, getting sick and it also prevents fungus gnats from going up your nose, in fact. Um, Cleanliness is a sign of civilization and garners respect. Just think of how people think of homeless people who garner pity instead of respect. And um, so it's it's better to, to be cleanly. Now, as for foot washing, washing the feet keeps us flexible. When we age, we lose that flexibility if we don't keep it up. It's a good idea to massage the feet daily as it has a lot of pressure points connected to the health of the rest of the body. Foot washing was retained from Judaism. Jesus or Isa, alayhi wasalam, also washed feet. Both Isa, alayhi wasalam, and Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, lived in the desert, and both would have understood that washing your feet really cools the body. It is much better to pray in a state of cool comfort than in a state of discomfort. Husul was also retained from Judaism. This verse from the Bible is similar to an ayah in the Quran. When a man has an omission of semen, he must bathe his entire body in water. He remains unclean until evening. Every piece of clothing and everything made of leather, which gets semen on it, must be washed with water. It remains unclean until evening. Leviticus 15, 16 to 18. And they ask you about menstruation, say it is harm. So keep away from wives during menstruation and do not approach them until they are pure. And when they have purified themselves, then come to them from where Allah has ordained for you. Quran 2, 222. On a spiritual level, it is like a daily baptism. I was listening to an inspirational speaker the other day. His name is Marshall Silver, and he said that he was told to shower every day to act as if wiping away sins from yesterday. So I talked a lot about um, uh, wudu and husu. Now we are going to talk about prayer. Barely Salah restrains oneself from shameful and unjust deeds, Quran 2945. Prayer establishes discipline in the same way that bodybuilding establishes discipline. According to uh, inspirational speaker Tony Robbins, if you train your body with anything that is difficult, such as Fajr prayer, it is a habit that will get you out of fear. And for us, it will also train your nafs or ego. The prayer schedule helps to control the mind because it helps you keep integrity as far as punctuality is concerned. 
Prayer teaches us to be cognizant of times, even if you're stranded on an island. It ensures that people keep their promises. Eventually, with enough discipline, no one will be able to, quote unquote, shake your tree. It sets the tone of the day and is an opportunity to set a goal and intention for the day. An intention is more important than the words you say when it comes to law of attraction. All methods of creation starts with an intention. As for prayer, prayer is a time to ask for forgiveness. Repentance encourages one to take 100% responsibility. One cannot give forgiveness until they receive forgiveness from Allah, the Most High, um, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same is with love. I'm sure you're already aware of some of these benefits of prayer, but prayer also increases happiness, increases the immune system, it reduces pain, and it increases longevity. Prayer is like, a med like meditation. It creates mindfulness, which in turn keeps one calmer, which is good for if you have, say, anxiety. It serves as a break in the day. It lowers the heart rate and blood pressure. It replaces the Sabbath so we can be renewed despite our busy schedules. Prayer serves the same purpose as 25 to 50 minutes of meditation per day, as far as law of attraction is concerned, and also transmutes energy. The focus on prayer blows negative charge. Wealthy homes often have chapels or masjids for prayer and contemplation for this reason. One thing about me is that I have ADHD, so I'm also keen to point out benefits to those with ADHD. Prayer uses motor skills so that the memorization of the prayer goes into to a different part of the brain than the part of the brain affected by ADHD. Fajr also encourages you to be a morning person. Um, it gets you out of bed even when you don't feel like doing anything which for some people is a major achievement, just getting out of bed. The times for the prayers are good pegs for pairing with the development of good habits. Prayer increases blood flow to the brain, which helps one better regulate feelings and emotions, as well as to help one focus. This can help with mental health. Prayer is also intended to be prayed without distraction, such as nothing on the walls, you're only staring at the prayer rug. Prayer addresses all, all of our love languages, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, and physical touch. Prayer serves as a reminder for us to do acts of service. The dua made during or after prayer is a request for a gift from Allah, the Most High. Prayer is quality time with Allah. The audible portion of prayer serves as words of affirmation, and prostration is like giving Allah a hug. Regarding duas, cupped hands hold energy and even Christians may hold their palms up, especially in contemporary churches. In terms of the physical body, it is good for the back, such as looking down with your hands on your knees and in prostration. And it shows the importance of the third eye, which makes contact with the ground. Another thing I forgot to add to my uh, chutbah is I had a conversation the other day in a masjid, and we were talking about how Horses, um, this special part on a horse's head is the forehead. And if you touch a horse's forehead, it calms them. And that is exactly the same place that touches the ground when we prostrate. The close times between the last three prayers between late afternoon and night makes it difficult for teens to get into trouble as well because drinking parties are usually held at night. Not only does it somewhat prevent the opportunity to drink, but it also prevents people from overeating if they remember that they must pray with their head to the floor because you don't want to pray uh, feeling like you're going to throw up. Um, now I'm going to talk about zakat for a little bit. An established prayer and give zakat and whatever good you put forward for yourselves, you will find it with Allah. Quran 2, 110. Zakat is a 2.5% tax we give annually from our net worth. Uh, but according to submitters, which are a type of Muslims, uh, those who follow the Quran only, it is per paycheck. In that respect, zakat is like tzedakah in Judaism, or 10% tithing in Christianity, or even 10% asand in Ismailia, uh, but more affordable. Um, however, unlike tzedakah, which is um, the Hebrew word in Judaism, the financial portion is not obligatory for those in debt or living paycheck to paycheck, only for those whose assets reach past a certain threshold. Uh, so it's not 
too challenging. Um, it's something that we can all do. One thing most people forget is that sadaka, which uh, relates to the word sadaka from Hebrew, um, of which zakat is an offshoot, includes things beyond finances, such as smiling and volunteering and other things that are um, um, not as uh, tangible. Giving, if it is with a joyful heart and done normally in secret, activates the law of attraction and positive karma that will come back to you. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about Psalm, which um, for those who are paying attention, I think is about 60 days away or it's coming up, uh, Ramadan is coming up. For those who are former Christians and are new to Ramadan, Ramadan is like Lent and Eid or Fritur is kind of like Christmas. Ramadan, literally the hot month, is a dry fast in which no water goes into any of our um, seven holes and is derived from the word Ramda, which means sun-baked sand. During longer Ramadan fasts of 16 hours or more, the body gets closer to autophagy, um, which is also related to the word hot, in which your cells repair themselves. This heats up the body and increases metabolism. It has massive healing effects. In Buddhism, Experienced monks are even able to meditate to the point where their body can completely dry a wet towel. Ketosis, a state wherein your body burns fat, requires 30 days of fasting to give you all these benefits. It boosts the brain, lowers bad cholesterol, regenerates the immune system, lowers blood pressure, and improves cardiovascular functioning. It lowers blood, pressure, blood sugar, absorbs more nutrients, clears skin, improves sleep, and even prevents epileptic seizures. Ketosis removes toxins from fat deposits and strengthens the gut's lining. The dates we use to break each fast have fiber, which cleanses the body in addition to the fast. At the end of Ramadan, people tend to experience about seven to eight pounds of weight loss if their iftars aren't too large. This is because ketosis only uses fat reserves, reduces appetite, boosts metabolism, and the loss of fat emphasizes existing muscle. There are many accommodations for circumstances, for example, for pregnant women, menstruating women, people with illnesses, um, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. So whoever among you is ill or on a journey, uh, then an equal number of days are to be made up. And upon those who are able to fast, but with hardship, a ransom as substitute of feeding a poor person each day. Quran 2, 184. If you intentionally break a fast in Ramadan, you must fast two more months. This prevents addictions and or brings them to light, kind of like a 12-step program. 12 steps always requires 90 days of, of abstinence. So if an addiction is confirmed, uh, for example, like a sex addiction, alcohol addiction, uh, drug addiction, then two more months are added to the fast. A 90-day fast removes all dopamine from the system. It doesn't mean the things we abstain from are bad necessarily. For example, uh, food isn't bad if you have a food addiction, music isn't bad, sex isn't bad, uh, but it teaches that if we can abstain from allowable things, then we can abstain from anything. With regard to music, um, an inspirational speaker, Ed Foreman says, if you're one who has a tendency that every time you get into your automobile and turn on ignition, the radio automatically comes on, what happens is you're automatically letting a little stream of sewage run through your mind on a regular basis. Because most mainstream music is designed to keep you in a negative state or with false information about how love works. We translate Psalm as fasting, but it literally means to refrain or abstain. If you abstain from anger, it also removes nafs ul amara from the amygdala. If you have no addiction to gossip, you have no false news and you have no stereotypes, at least spoken ones. Fasting can even help one remove addiction to this dunya, this planet, so we can go elsewhere, for example, Jannah. Remember that forgetting is not being considered breaking the fast. Um, this shows that even if addicts forget, it's okay, and they shouldn't beat themselves up about forgetting if they don't follow it up with more of the same behavior. Outside of physical benefits, there are spiritual benefits as well. Fasting was used by Jesus um, he fasted 20 days and 40 days. 
and also Mahatma Gandhi, who fasted several weeks as a spiritual practice. Ramadan encourages people to give a substantial amount of food to the poor, uh, 3.5 pounds. Psalm also gives us more resources, money, and time for other forms of sadaqah, such as volunteering. I believe that the um, OYC understanding is that Psalm gets us to quote unquote clear, or that would be the term that uh, Scientologists would, would call it. It polishes the mirror. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know only in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Um, since I'm a, a new, newish Muslim, I do still quote from the Bible. Um, this purification of the heart can also be seen as disidentification from our physical bodies and dunya, or non-attachment, free from personal likes and dislikes and removal of the inclination of anything. As with prayer, it gives people patience, which is a part of discipline and helps with delayed gratification, determination, and persistence. It teaches people to complete projects. It teaches mindfulness and is like a Sabbath for the body. Avoiding temptation due to the knowledge that we will all have to account for our deeds is the ultimate and delayed gratification. Now I'm going to talk about Hajj. Hajj and Umrah are mentioned 12 times in the Quran and in eight verses. Umrah occurs within the first 10 days of uh, Dual Hajja, or sorry, du Dul Hajj, or the four known months of submitter, for submitters. It should be performed immediately when conditions are met, except for the Shafi Madab. Uh, there is no debt, you are able to afford it, and you are escorted by a male rel relative or group leader if you are female identifying. Hajj shows people that we're all one. It was a pivotal moment in the life of Malcolm X. And the circular pattern of walking uh, in Hajj is a metaphor for our spiritual solar system. The wearing of white indicates purity and internal beauty, or isan. Even Hindus wear white to signify purity. The Zamzam well is a miracle. Its unlimited water is enough for daily water intake during the time of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and enough water uh, for the millions of people who travel there every year for Hajj. As you can see, we receive a multitude of benefits from the pillars of Islam. Prayer benefits the person praying, zakat benefits the person receiving and the person giving. Fasting has many physical and spiritual benefits to us and others. And Hajj reminds us of our unity with one another. The prerequisites for the five pillars also set the tone for illegally binding contracts and making contracts or covenants with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is to motivate us then um, so it's more for us than it is. Um, it's more. It's it's definitely beneficial for us. Um, Allah, the Most High, forgive me for any errors I made, and Allah, the Most High, knows best. So, I have finished a little bit under the time, but um, hopefully, you got a, a lot out of my hutba. for that um, fantastic reminders and I and I think we all appreciate uh, a lot of the anecdotes that you supplemented with um I especially uh, liked what you said about ADHD and how uh, memorization works and it like it, it takes a different part of your brain um, than you know in areas where ADHD can can hinder a memorization of Quran uh, works differently that I mean that was utterly fascinating so Jazakallah for that. Um, just 